On today's episode, a new Starship space station is revealed, Blue Origin has details on their orbital tugboat, plans for a military Starship cargo rocket move forward, and Congress fights for the Mars sample return mission. This is the Space Race. The SpaceX Starship has been chosen to deploy a giant new space station called Starlab, and the whole thing will be going to orbit in one shot. The January 31st announcement said that US-based Voyager Space and European multinational Airbus wants to get their Starlab launched by 2028, just before the International Space Station is decommissioned in 2031, which the companies are hoping will give SpaceX enough time to get Starship fully operational. The lab itself will contain roughly half of the pressurized volume of the ISS and has been designed as a small science park, a space laboratory with a habitation area and a separate service module, which will provide propulsion and solar power to the rest of the station. The main module itself has a huge 8 meter or 26 foot diameter, which is double the size of most ISS modules, but also happens to be the internal diameter of the Starship payload bay. And both modules of the Starlab station have been designed to pack neatly into one Starship, allowing the whole thing to be launched together rather than having multiple flights with some in-orbit construction time, which costs a lot of money. For comparison, the ISS cost NASA over $100 billion and took around 40 launches before it was finished. And even the proposed Axiom station that looks to replace the ISS in the next couple of years will take about five launches to get the initial modules up and constructed. Having only one flight saves a lot of time and money, but at the cost of some increased risk. Putting an entire station on one flight seems like an excellent way to lose your entire project. It's certainly more risky than making multiple launches, where a single mishap would only result in a single module destroyed, but with such a small station, it makes a lot of sense to go for one launch, provided Airbus and Voyager could find a stable enough launch vehicle. Company representatives say that they have been looking at a range of vehicles that could possibly haul their Starlab into orbit, but SpaceX's reputation apparently won them over enough to have them make this decision. As for customers, Starlab is in the unique position of being owned by a US-based company, Voyager Space, and a European one, Airbus. This means that they could attract both major agencies as clients, as the European Space Agency might be a little leery about using a purely American-owned commercial space station like Blue Origin's Orbital Reef. This may surprise you, but sometimes I need a break from thinking about outer space and rockets, and in my ongoing quest for distractions, I've been very happy to discover this free-to-play PC game called World of Warships. It delivers all of the explosions and interesting engineering that I love while taking the action to the high seas, which look fantastic. By the way, the water effects and textures in this game are virtually indistinguishable from real life, and they have over 40 unique maps with dynamic weather conditions. World of Warships also caters to my short attention span by offering new content releases every single month, so I can always count on enjoying a fresh gameplay experience. They even have these crossover updates that bring in new content from properties like Godzilla vs Kong, Transformers, and the legends of thrash metal themselves, Megadeth. Oh, did we mention the game is also available on consoles? Download World of Warships for free using the link in our description. During registration, use the promo code BRAVO to receive a huge starter pack, including 500 doubloons, 1.5 million credits, and 7 days of premium account time. Oh, and a ship. Blue Origin's new orbital transfer vehicle called Blue Ring was recently highlighted at the Spacecom conference held on February 1st. The company, famous for its almost allergic response to discussing its projects, shed some very uncharacteristic light on its newest vehicle, which Blue Origin expects will take advantage of this clear gap in the orbital market for a sort of tugboat, able to ferry payloads around the Earth's sphere of influence at a moment's notice. And during the presentation, Blue Origin's Vice President of National Security Sales, Lars Hoffman, gave us some very specific details about the capabilities of the new spacecraft. First up, Blue Ring will reportedly have 12 docking ports, each capable of linking to payloads weighing up to 500 kilograms. 
These ports can also be used for refueling, including having one blue ring refuel another, and if it doesn't need a port, the vehicle has a deck on the top that can handle 2.5 tons. In terms of range, the blue ring will have 3,000 meters per second of delta V or change in velocity, which it will use to push and pull its contracted payloads into various positions in orbit, which is good because the primary goal of blue ring is to be an orbital bus for anyone who wants to contract one of them. When announced on October 16th last year, Blue Ring was described as a spacecraft platform focused on providing in-space logistics and delivery with the capability to manipulate objects and vehicles in excess of 3,000 kilograms, as well as data relay and refueling services. Blue Origin wants to launch a certain amount of these vehicles and leave them in various positions in orbit for easy use rather than launching one whenever it's needed and then having it fall out of space once it's been used. Hoffman said that the flexibility of the vehicle is what really is its strength. It really is a multi-purpose vehicle and that's the way we want to offer it. There have not been any customers for the prototype vehicle just yet, but Blue Origin is trying to be the first to get a platform like this up and running before anyone else can get their foot in the door first. The US Air Force Research Laboratory has indicated that plans for using the SpaceX Starship rocket to build a rapid global cargo transportation system are moving forward. During the Space Mobility Conference on January 30th, AFRL's chief scientist Gregory Spaniers spoke about the Air Force program, which is currently digging through different scenarios for using the enormous SpaceX launch vehicle to quickly redeploy military cargo and humanitarian aid anywhere on the planet. Spaniers says that, quote, we've looked at this for seven years and it never makes any sense. Now we're finding that indeed it's looking a lot more attractive than it has in the past. The idea is that an autonomous rocket would be loaded up and launched into space, but on a suborbital path. From there, it would make course adjustments and land at a specified destination way faster than any plane could. The problem with this sort of system is mostly in the margin for error. Rockets explode all the time, but having them lift off fly and then land on a specific target hasn't been safely feasible until SpaceX started doing it with their Falcon 9. The bigger problem after that was getting various types of cargo to actually survive the trip. We are pretty used to transporting food, supplies, and gear to the International Space Station by now, but the Air Force wants to transport objects that weren't packaged for exposure to vacuum, like a Humvee. The Starship is large enough to accommodate something like that, but without pressurizing the payload bay, all the oils, grease, and fuel inside a vehicle would just vaporize at high altitude. But the AFRL is apparently moving forward with their plan anyway, so what changed? Two years ago, the Air Force gave SpaceX $102 million in a five-year contract to demonstrate that their Starship heavy lift rocket would be able to achieve stable point-to-point -point cargo runs. CEO Elon Musk has been talking about Starship being used for this sort of job since 2017 or so, and this was a great opportunity to prove it, especially since Starship was just about to start test flights. And although both test flights of the prototype rocket ended in explosions, it seems like the data gathered was enough to convince Air Force scientists that it would be worthwhile to continue adapting the system for their needs. At the heart of the military's interest is the rocket's reusability and projected launch rate. Combine that with Starship's ability to move over 100 tons of material, and you have a C-17 cargo plane that can get almost anywhere on the planet in about half an hour or so. And that is enough to get US Transportation Command interested, with representatives from the Pentagon indicating that people are watching what happens with Starship in 2024. Of course, SpaceX isn't the only company being tapped for this sort of work, Reportedly, Blue Origin, Sierra Space, Virgin Orbit, and Rocket Lab are also researching how to use their various vehicles to help with US military logistics. SpaceX just has the biggest rocket. As for what this means for the Starship program, we'll have to wait and see. As one SpaceX advisor puts it, we are building Starship to get to Mars, so as far as the company is concerned, any military contracts they get out of this would just be a bonus. In a letter to the White House delivered on February 1st, over 40 members of Congress are pleading to reverse some budget cuts to the Mars sample return mission made by NASA. The U.S. Space Agency's approach to the second part of the Mars mission 
started by Perseverance and the recently decommissioned Ingenuity helicopter rovers, was made in response to the threat of lowering funding from the Senate Appropriations Committee, a move that is still being discussed between the two levels of government. Currently, NASA and the rest of the US federal government is distributing funds using something called a continuing resolution, which is keeping budget allocation to where it was in 2023. For the Mars sample return mission, this means that Congress has authorized $822.3 million just for this operation. And this year, the House Appropriations Committee would actually like to raise that to match NASA's original asking budget of $949.3 million. The big problem is that the Senate doesn't agree. In the Senate's version of the budget proposal, NASA is allocated only $300 million for the MSR, far below the agency's asking cost. The potential for this drastic change in budget has forced NASA to begin planning for it, as overspending would be devastating for the survival of the mission entirely. The February 1st letter makes specific mention of the Senate changes and the concern of congressional leadership for the project saying that failing to fund MSR at appropriate levels could cause NASA to miss the next launch window, resulting in the cancellation of billions of dollars in contracts, as well as the termination of hundreds of highly skilled employees, something that has already started happening. Back at the start of January, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, which runs all of NASA's robotic missions, was forced to lay off 100 contractors in preparation for the loss in funding, for MSR specifically. The Mars sample return mission has had a rocky history from the get-go. When Perseverance and Ingenuity were launched in 2020, NASA and its European partners didn't even have a solid idea of how they would get the collected samples back home. A lander was what they eventually decided on in 2022, having a smaller fetch rover drive out and collect the containers directly, bringing them back to the lander, and then having a smaller vehicle separate and launch back into orbit. Later in 2023, that plan was changed by Congress to make use of Ingenuity-style robots to gather the samples buried in caches across the operational area, thanks largely to the success of Ingenuity itself. And maybe that's why the House Appropriations Committee is fighting so hard for this funding. Regardless, the 2024 budget bills haven't been passed just yet, so there is still time to see if a compromise can be worked out, but NASA is simply responding to the possibility of a lower budget. So whether or not the soil samples collected by Perseverance for the last three years make it back to Earth is firmly in the hands of the dueling appropriations committees.